What would you like today? Another Cloud 2 Classic? I'll stick with the usual. Maybe take a little bit off the sides. Oh, that's fresh. The HyperX Cloud 2 Wireless. Legendary comfort goes wireless. Hey, watch your head. Hello everybody and welcome to the NECC Rocket League Playoffs Day at number 2. My name is Bass from the Past and joined alongside me is my one and only co-caster, Hyferia. Hyferia, welcome to the booth, my friend. We have got St. Clair versus Potomac State as our intro match for the day and I could not be more excited. How are you doing on this fine, I believe it's evening for you, my friend. Yeah, it's uh, about an hour until midnight, but I'm doing absolutely <laughs> lovely. You said my one and only. That really remind me, reminded me of a fun idea that we should do uh, surely at some point where we just get eight people into cast at the same time. And that's not about this uh, about this series whatsoever. And this is kind of where you have uh, what we can call the main event as the teaser for the rest of the evening. St. Clair versus Potomac State, number two seed versus number three seed in the champions division i don't know how many more things i can keep on adding to just make it better and better because it is looking phenomenal 
Yeah, this is going to be a very, very intense matchup. The last time these two teams fought each other was, I believe, in week number three of regulation during the season. And Potomac State, they just barely lost. They lost 3-2 to two versus St. Clair, but now they've got some momentum in their favor. St. Clair got a bye because of the fact that they were the number two seed, so they didn't have to play in playoffs yet. Potomac State has already taken a win so far, a 3-0 to zero sweep over Fanshawe. And that's an impressive stat in itself. That is not an easy team to try and just wipe off the board, but they have done exactly that. They have momentum in their favor. And now Potomac State want revenge for that game five loss they took during the season. It's going to be an intense matchup, Hyferia, and I honestly just cannot wait for this one to start on up. Oh, yeah, neither. It is going to be so incredibly interesting here. Uh, St. Clair versus Potomac. Oh, this is where the seeds get together. Obviously, in that first round, you always have that case of, oh, yeah, but they're really far apart seed-wise. So it's really not that, oh, I don't want to say not that interesting, but it, it, it's more expected, the results here. You have a lot more fluctuation, a lot more back and forth, because even though Fanshawe, they aren't easy to sweep, they were the number six seed coming into this, so it's not necessarily... Oh my god, what happened there and right here? We can very much have that today. Yeah, this really could go either way. As we've mentioned, these guys are the two and three seed. Both of these teams are very, very experienced. They are very prepared to come into this one, both with extremely positive records uh, at St. Clair at eight and one, and then Potomac at six and I believe, yes, yeah, six and three. They both had really, really good records. They took some wins against some very strong teams throughout the season, but it does not matter if they cannot get it done right here, right now. This is when it all matters, Hyferia. All of your regulation, all of the regular season, it doesn't really matter much here because you come in with the exact same chips on your shoulder with the exact same amount of pressure you are going to have to win here if you want to move on you lose and that is the end of your playoff run doesn't matter what seed you have nothing can save you from that inevitability we're gonna have to figure out which one of these two teams are ready for exactly that st Clair versus western virginia university potomac state college that is a mouthful when you say it in its entirety but uh, hey, listen, no matter what we're going to call them, we're going to call them some fierce competitors. I'm excited to see this match start on up here. And honestly, besides that, I don't have much more to say, Hi Fury. This is just going to be a phenomenal matchup to start off the day. And well, I don't think we've mentioned it yet. These are number two and number three seeds. I'm just kidding. We have mentioned that pretty much every single sentence from this point on. But something interesting that... Well, St. Clair being number two, they are eight and one, whereas the Potomac are six and three. So there's a well, pretty significant difference between the number two and the number three C, but that significant diff diff difference completely might just mitigate itself on the pitch as we do have game one underway. We'll have to see what it is for this first game already. You can see the pressure starting to be applied here. Potomac State are going to be in the orange, and they are on attack while St. Clair in the blue on defense so far here. But we're only 15 seconds in. The midfield presence we're seeing so far out of Potomac, I'm liking this changeup. I'd seen them play previously, and they had an okay midfield presence, but to see them suffocating so early, it bodes very well, especially when the shots are already ringing home. One goes off target, but St. Clair already enduring the offensive pressure that Potomac State have to offer. This is going to be a long game for everyone off of St. Clair if they continue to allow these attacks. Similarly, though, Potomac State need to make sure they get some touches when they're on defense. Some scary plays on both sides so far here, High Fury, but still no goal to show for it. It's it's like scary in the way of a pit bull running at you with a limp. Like it's it's scary, but at the same time, it looks a little bit odd at times, and that is exactly what this game is. It looks a little bit odd at times. Well, there can just be a goal at any single moment in those old times. Hiroshi can't make a mistake in defense, does hold his ground very decently in the defensive corner. Come on, a 1v1 situation, or more likely a 2 on one goes for the backboard and gets the double tap. Oh my word, come on. All right, well, that's one way to have a response after a lot of offensive pressure. All it takes is one good solo play, and Kamal with some space will punish. That's a big thing you're going to have to be careful of at this rank, at this level. If you're going to give anybody some space, they're going to do wonders with it, and already we're seeing Potomac getting punished by exactly that. A minute 30 in, there's plenty of time for adjustments, but similarly, they have to be careful on defense. A back pass gone awry, and it's going to give some pressure now to St. Clair. I fear you, this is definitely not the start Potomac wanted. They had a lot of good offensive pressure off the, after the first kickoff. Since then, they really haven't had much chance on attack. 
Yeah, exactly. They have that one opportunity in a wide open net. But I don't think Rolts at that point realized that it was completely open. This time he makes sure that his own net stays well defended. Clears it out to the side, but Potomac are once again back on that defensive position. Zero down the pitch. Catches it by Kamal. It rolls for the decent shot. And what is Endeavor doing? He just didn't jump for it. Now that I look at the scoreboard, it might just be some ping issues. Uh, it could have been some ping issues. Unfortunately, that happens every once in a while. And as Endeavor just drives underneath the ball. I do believe part of that, I mean, even if the ping issues weren't there, I don't know if he was in the right position. A bit too far off the line. And this is something you can see at pretty much every level of Rocket League. When you rotate back, your goal is to rotate into the net at least a little bit and to the back of the post. You don't do exactly that. Oh, my <laughs> word. You leave yourself vulnerable. But I'm going to be honest, back post rotation or not, I'm not sure if there was much you can do to stop a shot like this. I honestly don't think so. And Potomac, they went from a one goal deficit to a one goal surplus in the matter of about seven seconds or so. That is incredibly speedy. And Rolt's completely at the forefront of that. Now St. Clair needs to try and make that comeback. And that is what I mean. There is a lot more crazy stuff happening here already. As a, you don't see this every day. You don't see Kamal being that awkward on defense every single day. Double commit coming out afterwards. But Endeavor still first ball. First man to the ball. Doesn't get the touch he needed. And thus the attack will only stop for a brief moment. As Garashi just fifties it right back in. Surely Potomac can clear it out now though. At this point, we're just seeing a bit of a back and forth and back and forth right now. It's extremely awkward and very weird for both teams. And it's not really going to favor them in terms of momentum. Oh, but it might give them a good opportunity oh. here. Oh, Garashi tries to get a shot on. But Endeavor is there for the backup. And we are tied up once again. I'm kind of glad that this works out. The pass from Endeavor to Kamal. And Kamal, instead of shooting it himself, passed it as well. It absolutely delicate the amount of cohesion that they showed right there is absolutely amazing yeah, goal food directly gets it towards the other side and the kick up was a dangerous time for st Clair last time this time come all seems to be able to break out pretty decently but he backed off expecting golf to actually get the touch goal food in towards the center Russ can't rip it on target it's going to bounce off the side will straight back into that center position it's a good block out of Kamal though they're back and forth so far here, but all it takes is one small mistake. And oh, speaking of which, no one's there to contest in the corner. And I thought Endeavor might just have the dunk, but somehow Potomac will walk away unscathed and now might even get an offense for themselves. Garashi is going to get up in the way, though, very early and make sure to not allow any more attacking pressure out of Potomac. Potomac are falling asleep a little bit right now, Hyperia. They're not rushing to the ball as quickly as they need to, and as a result, they're giving a lot of space to their opponents. St. Clair taking advantage of that, but the thing is, they're still at a tied ball game. St. Clair need to take advantage of the space they're being given because it's not going to last very long. Eventually, Potomac are going to up the speed, and they want to make sure you have a lead by that point. Yeah, exactly, and well, the closer it is to zero seconds, the closer will obviously be to that golden goal scenario already without it even being overtime. Rolls missing the ball completely, he was looking for that perfect, delicate touch. Garashi using all his boost to try and get a second touch. He didn't find one, and now Kamal's in an awkward position. Not even getting the 100 pad, and that is a position where he could have used this boost to try and steal that 100 boost. He was a little bit too dangerous for him. Rolls with a decent touch. Kamal still has enough to clear it out for now, but Endeavor needs to bail them out, give them some breathing room, one-on-one -on -one situation. And Rolls was taken out of the pitch, but these final 28 seconds are going to be heated. This is going to be a very tense back and forth. We're still seeing a lot of space being given to St. Clair, but now Potomac are getting a little bit of space of their own. St. Clair are getting a bit more hesitant out at midfield, and this is something we mentioned to start the game was how much the midfield presence was looking impressive. Now it's kind of started to falter. There really isn't as much midfield presence as much as it's an offensive third versus a defensive third, and then back and forth on taking turns. And speaking of which, there's probably going to be one last chance now here for everyone from Potomac spiked into their own half. But oh no, Gold Food cannot keep it up. And indeed, it is two to two overtime game number one. And Hafiri, we said these two teams were going to be pretty close. Game one overtime feels only fitting. Yeah, exactly. Now let's just have it going for a little bit. But it's St. Clair full on an attack. Zero actually able to break out very quickly or at least receive the ball on the breakout very quickly while he is in an octane. 
Ross whips it across the pitch. It's a double commit. So this backboard redirect is not going to do anything. It wasn't going to do anything since Kamal was there regardless. But now Kamal missing the ball completely. Endeavor has to bail them out. And St. Clair have shown a little bit of oddities. They need to get them out. They need to iron those out very, very soon. Otherwise, that one oddity is going to cost them very dearly. Every once in a while, we have that type of offense. We have that type of game where it's really the first team to break down on defense, and all of a sudden, the openings just show themselves to everyone on the pitch, and usually they get capitalized upon, especially at this level. But so far, we're about a minute into overtime. Neither team really making those large mistakes. The one thing we are seeing is, again, that midfield presence is really not there quite yet. Endeavor does make a good challenge, but still, the hesitancy we're seeing out of both teams is going to come back to bite them eventually. There's a lot of aggression there at Garashi as they almost are able to dunk that one on target, but they will continue the offense now. As it goes out to Rots off the backboard, though, it's a quick counterattack, and now a chance for Potomac in the center. Is anyone there? Pass from Garashi. Might actually just go to the other team, but somehow the 50-50 will find itself back out of midfield. Almost an open net, but Golfu does get in the way. With about a minute 30 on the clock, we've seen a very tense back and forth, but still, again, Hyperia, no team able to capitalize upon the ample amount of room they're being given on the pitch. Oh no, goal food. Oh no, that is going straight across the neck. Rashi puts it low, and that is that one oddity in the defense. Goal food clearing that right in front of his own goal. I'm not too sure. He must have thought that it was going to get more power. Otherwise, surely you would not clear that way. But that is a very costly mistake as it gives St. Clair the game. And now Potomac are on a back foot. The last time they were on the back foot, though, in the game itself, they brought it back rather quickly. So really, who knows? Yeah, and a big thing about that entire game was that it's still the game number one of a best of five. There's a little bit of warm-up being had here where these teams need to try and feel each other out and figure out how they want to play. And I think we're starting to see what type of gameplay we're going to have. It's not necessarily going to be as high-octane gameplay as some of the other teams at this rank. I think it's going to be a little bit more patient and a little bit more hesitant. And while that's not necessarily always the most beneficial of a strategy, if it works for a team, it works for a team. When it stands right now, that's what St. Clair is doing. They're playing very patiently, and so is Potomac. They're giving space and time to the other team and then just preparing on defense. The four saves to five saves on each team is really going to be uh, evidence of exactly that. They would rather play patiently and wait for these plays to develop and then try and stomp them as soon as they start to get a bit threatening rather than making silly mistakes by being over-aggressive. And I I'm... I guess a fan of it, like I said, but it really is one of these things where I feel like if a team starts upping the pace just even a little bit, they're going to walk away with this series pretty easily. Yeah, I think for Potomac, up in that pace is going to be in Rots. Rots has really been popping off, and at some point in that, during the closing end of that series, we did see that Azuro was on the side wall and actually rotating back while Rots got a phenomenal clear out and the opportunity of a to redirect or a double tap or something in Rose, but Azura was already rotating back, but that's neither here nor there because that is all going in game number one, and now we are in game number two. Gold food with a decent 50 and the aggression from, from Potomac already looking up to par. It very much shows that they didn't really take much out of that loss and they just well yeah just shake it off let's do better next time if Rots has a good early challenge Goldfoot rips one on target and oh my word and Potomac are on fire right now all right well there's the aggression I was saying Potomac needed to cut down that space in the air they do exactly that Rots pre-jumps the ceiling and gets the 50-50 perfect passing play perfect way to start off here for Potomac and that's the aggression we were hoping for. Hopefully they don't start getting passive now that they've gotten that little bit of aggression because it could come back to bite them. Oh, but maybe a little bit too aggressive there. Gold food dives early and will get punished. Garashi is going to be up for this one. And one to one it becomes. It's a nice early challenge by Rots, but Gold food cannot afford to challenge immediately after. And that's just way too much open space in the midfield. Uh, if you do a case study of why double committing would be better than single committing, that is exactly why double committing is better at times, a very specific time, because, well, I mean, let's be real, Endeavor should have just hit that himself or not gone whatsoever. And that's, once again, well, Rutz putting it into the attack. He's really been at the forefront of getting the attacks going. Right now, having one assist on the board for himself, I wish they couldn't really get more Rutz rotating back, letting Golfi take the shot. Last time was an absolute ripper. This time, it's a little bit lackluster. And Kamal is thus able to clear it out with zero in the back end. Rips it right into Kamal. He's 
guys with zero boost got way better, way more out of that deal than he should have. And the defense has broken out. They are going on that counter. And once again, they just throw it away. And Potomac, those initial 20 seconds have completely dissipated in, well, not really the same state that they're in anymore. No, we're seeing a lot of double commits, a lot of weird rotations. They're just putting themselves in awkward positions. And while I said the aggression was night, over, over aggression that turns into, I'd say, a lot of mistakes like we're seeing on the field right now, it's not going to benefit them in any way, shape, or form. Notice how overextended Rots is there. And as a result, the only touch they can make is a panic clear that goes immediately to the other team. They need to be trying to play this one a little bit more carefully. They need to break down the pace of play, dribble it out of their half, and force a challenge out of their opponents. As it stands right now, everybody off of St. Clair just kind of waiting out at midfield, waiting for these touches to inevitably get boomed towards them so that they can restart the offense. Another great example there is Endeavor just steals that one away from midfield. Gold Food finally does try to play this one slowly. And this might actually give them some space. No defenders, home, get it to the center goal. Rots is there and two to one, Potomac will take the lead. There was absolutely nobody there uh, from St. Clair. I thought surely someone would be back for in time since it was such a slow way around the side. Well, well, Potomac will very much capitalize off of that. And St. Clair, he almost had a vice grip on Potomac. That is the amazing thing that Potomac scored and broke away from a scenario where they were completely in prison almost. And it was uh, ridiculous that they broke out and got a goal out of that. Yeah, they do have to keep that lead because last time they scored a goal, they seem to fall apart just a tad rust putting it to the backward, going for the bump. Goldfoot can't get it on target now. Azura has a risky challenge, gets a 50, and that's all they really needed to do in that scenario. And that's the thing that we're seeing out of both of these teams is they're starting to develop that midfield presence that we said was inevitable in a game like this. The issue... Oh, excuse me. The issue is, is that they're not really quite using it correctly. Midfield presence isn't meant to be there as just sort of this risky last minute resort. It's meant to be there as a, well, it's there to keep the pressure alive. And they're not really doing that right now. They're using that midfield presence as a desperation play. And that is really about it. With two minutes remaining, they need to try and change this one up very, very quickly because it's too dangerous of a scenario for them to continue playing like this. I would say for both sides, for St. Clair, they need to use that midfield presence more accurately so that they can get extended pressure and make sure that they can try and tie this one up for potomac right now they need to try and cut down those risks way too many risks are going to put them in an awkward position to where this one goal lead could be erased within a moment's notice speaking oh. of which well <laughs> well you say it boss yeah it, it indeed can as a terrible defensive error comes through as oh i don't think rots expected a shot to even come through and this is the the tiny thing where you can really nitpick that kind of defense. Rots rotated towards the near post instead of taking a little bit of a wider turn into that far post position to really cross in front of the goal because it was just, frankly, a little bit too close to the play. It was too close to the ball and there was no real purpose in it. And now they're all of a sudden behind us. Endeavor outspeeds Potomac once again and St. Clair have just done what Potomac did in game number one. This is the aggression that we were talking about, just overly aggressive there in the corner and popping the ball to the other opponent. This is something we've been mentioning. They need to make sure that they're trying to possess the ball and change the pace of play. Variation and change of pace of play is going to throw off your opponent so incredibly greatly. And when you just keep booming the ball out to midfield and basically giving away possession on repeat, eventually teams are going to start to notice in St. Clair. They are way too deadly of a team to try that strategy against. They're going to notice that instantaneously and that they have now all of a sudden a bunch of extra space the shot not on target but again St. Clair they're pay playing this one with such good variation of pace they're quick to the ball when they need to be but right there they play patiently to make sure that they do not make a mistake and can continue this offensive pressure they are forced into their half once again but look how comfortably Kamal is able to dribble out of their own half and turn this into an offense once again this is the difference between the two teams right now we're seeing a lot of aggression out of Potomac but it is not varied enough and has become predictable meanwhile St. Clair they're switching up their pace of play every five seconds and it's keeping their opponents on their back foot pretty much the entire time 
Yeah, St. Clair, they need to watch out for because last time Potomac just broke away out of absolutely nowhere. Now Rox has a shot. Garashi with a good save. Zero tries for Rip One, but this time he should have taken the longer way around. Garashi was obviously going to block the shot as first priority. Rox getting a touch. Can he actually get it further? Gets a block on it. But apart from that, there's not really that much from Potomac that they can live off of, that they can build upon right now as Garashi takes the smart way, literally uses his entire tank to 50 everybody, and then Rox whips it a little bit too far might be able to keep that up but did not have a perfect read once again for Potomac a tiny thing turn into a squandered opportunity and that is the level we're playing at right now yeah, that's the difference between these two teams right now is that uh, advantageous ability to just take over when you have that little bit of opportunity. And we're not really seeing that out of Potomac right now. Potomac looks pretty good in that game, but it's minor mistakes that they're making that are putting themselves in awkward positions. They're just not really quite able to stay with the ball to the same degree that they would be able to if they were playing with a little bit more patience. St. Clair are doing exactly that. They're playing patiently, but keeping their pace up so they know when they've got to whip it around the field and go at mock speed versus when they've got to break it down and go to a snail's pace. And that variation between the two of them keeps their opponent guessing, keeps them on their back heel, trying to figure out what exactly they're doing. And it's something we haven't seen at Potomac. Potomac on repeat just keep booming the ball, making these weird challenges that aren't that opportune, and it's putting them in awkward positions on repeat. Right now, Potomac need to be very careful in the challenges that they make, the touches that they make and try and play that a little bit more precisely because they're giving away the ball at very inopportune times and it's leaving them vulnerable on repeat. Yeah, exactly. It's leaving them vulnerable. Okay, heading into game number three. It's been, all been one goal games. That being said, St. Clair is currently on match point. They just need to win one more right here to take down Potomac in a sweep, something that Potomac did earlier in the playoffs. Obviously, St. Clair, once again, they did not have a opponent in that first round, but let's see what St. Clair can do. Or rather, all eyes on Potomac as they are the ones who have to try and make this comeback. They have to reverse sweep a zero, taking it to the backboard. Nobody there for the follow-up, and then Ever is obviously going to clear that out to the side. Rots can't quite rip it from distance, and that's something I like to see from Potomac that, well, they take it round the side a little bit more. They don't go for goal every single time. They take the long way around because that is the way that St. Clair won't expect it. Yeah, that's a big thing is making sure to keep your opponents on their toes the entire time. And so far, we're seeing a good change out of Potomac to where they're doing exactly that. But if they can't get an early goal, it's really not going to matter. They need momentum in their side and they need a chance to try and see some vulnerability out of their opponents. So far, St. Clair haven't done exactly that. Instead, they're taking shots on a very quick counterattack. Another shot comes out of Endeavor. This one off target. So instead, Garashi is going to have to just try and keep this one on the side. Instead, Kamal with an early challenge is actually going to create a double commit. Vulnerability here. Can Potomac do something with it? Good passing what? play. And Azura will score. Now, what is that? That is uh, the long way around. I mean, I say the long way. That was an absolute bullet, but Rots very much could have ripped a shot himself. Instead, he lays it off. And then St. Clair find themselves scrambling, find themselves uncertain as to what to do. And all of a sudden, you have a great opportunity for Potomac. Once again, they, they take the lead, but they need to actually keep it. St. Clair have been incredibly efficient in that offensive position. They now need to prove it once again. Come on, taking it to the skies. That's always a dangerous position. Position. Both defenders missing it off of the backboard, and this could be absolute horror for them. They do manage to hold on for now, but come on, coming in for that second shot. Incredibly slow. It actually gets through, and then it will be picked up. Come on, this one won't be picked up by Potomac, though, and they do convert. This is literally everything we had been complimentary about for St. Clair. The ability to see each other on the pay on the pay on the pitch. I can't even speak because I'm so impressed by that goal. The ability to see each other on the pitch, the variation of pace, the ability to use every part of their pitch and have precise touches. It's just this is what's making St. Clair the winner of this series right now. They are tied one to one here in game number three, but they're very much poised to try and take the sweep. We need to see some variation out of Potomac. I'm liking the passing plays they're starting to throw in here and there, but I still haven't seen a lot of uncomfortable play out of everyone off of uh, off of St. Clair. St. Clair need to be put on their back heel, and I'll keep hammering this point home because you can't win against a team that's about to think they're going to win, and that's the biggest thing I'm seeing right now is that St. Clair, no matter how many times a goal is scored against them, they still have enough confidence that it seems like they could win at any moment. 
Yeah, they don't overdo that confidence. Sometimes you see, oh yeah, somebody's just going up for every single ball. They're feeling incredibly confident and actually squandered every single opportunity because they completely disrespect their opponents. Right now, they're still respecting their opponents while being incredibly confident. St. Clair, if they can keep that going, they might just be able to run away with a sweep here. I would say not necessarily a deserved sweep. Like obviously, St. Clair has been absolutely amazing, but every single game thus far has been a one goal game now nah, Potomac they need to get out of that defense position something they struggled to do initially pretty much the entire time Ross uses pretty much all the boost to drive underneath the ball and not get a hit whatsoever this is very awkward right now Potomac I'm not too sure what's going on, on their side but I guess the awkwardness continues and finally St. Clair will capitalize and I thought this has been blooming for a long amount of time and this is the big thing with St. Clair. This is why we continue to mention their rotations, their ability to see each other on the pitch. If they're going to make an aggressive challenge in the corner, they're not immediately going to have that same player jump on it a second time. They're making sure that once that initial risky challenge is made, the player goes back and goes back into rotations, and then they can have another player that keeps that offensive pressure up. It's this communication we're seeing, the ability, this three-man weave, as we like to call it, between everybody off of St. Clair, that is giving them so much pressure and giving them such an advantageous position every time they're on the pitch we need to see that out of potomac potomac right now are starting to vary their play uh their play style a little bit where they're getting more passing plays but again notice how aggressive that touch off the backboard was out of goal food they're still booming the ball overly aggressively and it's not helping them whatsoever they need to start possessing this and turning it into greater plays because as much as these boomers are you know great for buying some space that's pretty much all it does it buys you space and considering the other team has been taking advantage of said space maybe start trying to keep this one a little bit closer and this is a, a tactician against somebody who tries to use brute force Potomac. They're trying to use brute force every single time. I'm not saying St. Clair have got bad mechanics because that is a completely wrong endeavor. Pr get a double touch to prove me right. No, it's Kamal who takes it to the skies and just whips it in with a lot of confidence. It still kind of proves my point, but St. Clair, they're just a little bit more tactical right now, not overcoming. You see Garoshi on the back end so far back and does the ball does get boomed out. St. Clair completely prepared for it. Yeah, they're just playing this one correctly as it stands right now. The strategy that they're showing is just incredibly heads up, and it's giving them so many good looks at the goal and at chances to score. And to be completely honest, they're scoring on most of these. They do not have, I would say, a perfect percentage, but at almost half in three out of the seven shots hitting the back of the net. Meanwhile, actually, to be fair, they've had at least 100% accuracy in terms of that. They have the three goals on the board for the seven shots, and the only other shots that have been ripped off have been saves directly against Potomac. Potomac was four total saves so it's offensive efficiency right now for St. Clair they're making sure that if they rip a shot on target it has got some sort of threat to hit the back of the net and with 30 seconds left Potomac need to start trying to mimic that St. Clair look like they're poised to take this one in a sweep and this would be the greatest lead they've had so far a two goal lead is not going to be easy to bring back especially considering the one goal games but I think Potomac can do it if they can try and convert here on this offense. Gold Food needs to try and catch. Oh, my word. I was going to say catch this one at midfield. But unfortunately, a good 50-50 for Kamal will be the nail in the coffin as Garasi scores. And once again, just a little bit of a weak clear out. And I'm not too sure Kamal actually being incredibly generous to his teammates. I guess he wants to get everybody above 400 points. Meanwhile, he himself is not on 400 points himself. But maybe, who knows, in those 10 seconds, anything can happen. What? Well, I'd say anything. What can't happen is they come back out of Potomac. They are buried and will be forced to rethink their decisions and come back next season because they just been knocked out. Unfortunately for Potomac, this is the end of the road for them. They played a great game, but it just slowly got further and further out of hand, and St. Clair took full advantage of that. Congratulations to St. Clair, as they will be moving on to the finals here. And I fear you, I'm going to be 100% honest with you. St. Clair just looked dominant there. The last time these two teams met up, Potomac State took them to game number five. This one, St. Clair didn't even give them the option. They ran through this in all three games with extreme efficiency. And despite the first two being close, this third one was not even close to close. It was just incredibly efficient out of St. Clair. They recognized what they were doing correctly and leaned into those tendencies further and further throughout the series. Just really impressive play out of St. Clair, to put it simply.
Well, this is where I think about what I said earlier on, and I always have that little reflection of myself at the end of a series. What did I say at the start? Well, that's... Uh... Anything can happen and it, it, it will be a lot closer. So I thought, boy, was I wrong. Oh my word, a sweep just coming through. Next round, next round will be a lot closer, sure. The, the final, surely that's not going to be another sweep, right? But it has been an absolutely amazing one from St. Clair. As you said, they're just speedier. They're just very, very boldly put better right now. They, sh they were better in that series, which well got them the win that being said it was an absolutely amazing fight out of potomac they do have they did bring it to one goal games pretty much every single time except the last one yeah it really was a great back and forth between two teams so i do want potomac to keep their heads high it was a very impressive performance and i can tell you what they're going to come back next season with a whole lot of firepower and i believe that they can try and do some real damage here in this division similarly to how they did this year at six and three they should not be ashamed of their scoreline especially considering they moved past the first round of playoffs so seriously well done to western virginia university potomac state college you guys did a great job here today but unfortunately at the end of it all there can only be one winner and that was St. Clair. Congratulations to St. Clair who are going to move on to the very next round and we'll have a chance at that championship. We'll have a chance to win it all but for right now, that is everything that we have got. Hyferia, you and I, unfortunately, that will be the end for us casting. But we might be back with a little bit of an interview or something similar. So stay tuned. We're going to see a couple of quick words from everybody that makes this possible. And when we come back, we will either have an interview or our next game. So stick, to, stick around and find out what happens. We will see you guys in just a moment. What would you like today? Another Cloud 2 Classic? I'll stick with the usual. Maybe take a little bit off the sides. Oh, that's fresh. The HyperX Cloud 2 Wireless. Legendary comfort goes wireless. Hey, watch your head.
Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the NECC Rocket League playoffs. My name is Bass the Pass, and joining beside me one more time is Hyferia. And Hyferia, we just had a, uh, well, we'll call it an unexpected sweep to put it simply. St. Clair, the number two seed, taking down Potomac State, the number three seed, in a 3 to 0 fashion. Last time they met, it was a best of five that went to all five games. This time, it's a little bit more one sided. And, well, part of the reason is the players that were on the pitch, some really, really good plays out of everybody off of St. Clair, including a couple of, including a player known, known as Endeavor. We're going to be bringing him into the booth in just a couple of minutes. But, Hyferia, that was a, uh, to put it simply, that was a one sided affair. We weren't expecting to be one sided. Yeah, exactly. It was a little bit mental how well one-sided it was. I, I, as you said, wasn't expecting it. You said a couple of minutes. We just have four more in time. We already have Endeavor in here. How is it going today, Endeavor? How are you feeling? Yeah, I'm good. You know, fresh off a of dub. How are you guys? <laughs> We're doing great. We're excited to see that you are just as excited as we are about that one. And indeed, it was a very convincing win, 3-2-0 fashion over a team that you guys went to five games against them during the regular season. What do you really think was the difference between this game and the se the game you had during the season? Was there just a different uh, game plan or was it just something in the air that made you guys pop off today? I feel like after the loss, we took a lot of notes down and we scrimmed a lot of better teams to focus on building our chemistry. And all around, just improving our mechanics and everything together. As you can see, we were firing off all cylinders. And, like, we didn't have, like, one mistake that was too big for our defense to mess up. Like, I feel like that we're playing more like a team rather than, a, like, 1v1v1v1. 1v1, 1v1. So I feel like that was probably the best reason to why we got the dub today. Yeah, going into that 1v1v1, 1v1, uh, obviously we can talk about the team and everything, how you guys prepared, but how do you have like, I don't know, maybe a pre-match ritual, something you like to do to calm the nerves or something, just to get into the mindset of grinding, or is there just, you just hop in? Uh, to be honest, the boys, we always got our music to go to. Uh, I got my Taylor Swift. Uh, oh, yes, Kamal, sir. I, I think he listens to our rap. Rashi, he listens to Avril Lavigne, you know, we got, we got mm. the old school bangers, the things that the Rock League community is not used to, you know, you used to see some Black Bear, some like the baby, mm. but you know, them old school <laughs> bangers, that's what gives us the bangers in game. Yes, right. sir. Interesting. Interesting. I mean, I will say, Hyferia, you might have a little bit of conflict with. He is probably the number one DeBaby fan on the planet. Oh, but shoot. <laughs> Let's go. I think, <laughs> yes, I think sir. that you guys have a great strategy there, making sure that the vibes are up, making sure that everybody on the pitch is ready for the game. And I mean, you guys look very ready for the game here today. You played phenomenally. You guys were able to, as you said, not make very many mistakes. And at least of those mistakes, you backed each other up correctly and made sure they did not lead into bigger issues. And Props to you guys for that. You really look confident, but you're not quite done. You've still got one more game throughout the end of this uh, of this playoff run, and that game is going to be either against Durham College or against Nichols. Of the two teams, they're not playing on stream here today, unfortunately, so we're going to just have to see the results after they are posted. Who are you hoping comes out of that one as the winner? Do you have a preference, or is it kind of, hey, throw whoever you wanted us. We got this. We're ready for them. Yeah, I want Durham. I want all the smoke Ooh, from Durham. Okay. Ooh, okay. There's school rivals. I want Durham. No two ways about it. Okay. All right. So Durham College, you listen, you guys have got some challengers waiting for you guys in the grand finals. And well, that is where you guys will stay for now. We will let you get back to your team and celebrate a little bit more. But thank you oh, very shoot. much, Endeavor, you. for coming through here. Before we let you go, though, any shout outs you want to give to anybody in the chat that might be watching? Yeah, I want to shout out my uh, Captain Kamal. He helped uh, build the team from the ground up. You know, Garashi, that boy is a solid backbone to our squad, you know, <laughs> and my coach Mike, my coach Mike, he keeps us humble, you know, we always take the high road, we never, you know, talk smack, we always gotta, you know, just be the bigger person in every scenario, and we learned that through uh, him being our coach, I feel like that's our biggest takeaway from being part of the team. All right. Well, respect there. We appreciate that you guys are keeping the sportsmanship alive, and we will let you do exactly that. Let you go talk trash behind the scenes where no one's listening so that <laughs> you, you guys that. You can go and celebrate. <laughs> Actually, though, jokes aside, we'll let you go. Have a great rest of your day. Endeavor. Hey, you too. All right, thank you. 
All right. Well, Hyferia, uh, similarly, we've said it enough times today. All good things must come to an end, and that is the end of you and I casting for the day. Unfortunately, my friend, that is going to be that, but it was a pleasure as always. And the good thing is we're not done with Rocket League action here at the NECC. We've got multiple games coming up, and although it, they are not going to all be casted by myself and Hyferia, I can guarantee you they're going to be bangers the entire time. Hyferia, before we go, any last words before we depart? Oh, I can do shout outs as well. Shout out to my mum back home. You're the, you're the real day one. Um, apart from that, shout out to my dad as well. And um, shout out to my puzzle maker in the back. That is going to be, we're going to go into a tiny little break. We're going to have an absolutely amazing day of Rocket League. And I would love to all see you in a bit. What were you like today? Another Cloud 2 Classic? I'll stick with the usual. Maybe take a little bit off the sides. Oh, that's fresh. The HyperX Cloud 2 Wireless. Legendary comfort goes wireless. Hey, watch your head.